Welcome to United Methodist Women's Sunday. I hope you uh, enjoy our presenter from Cunningham Hall later on. If you would bow your heads for a moment of prayer now, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for all women today. Thank you for our hearts. May you bless us right now. Fill us with your incredible peace. Wrap us in your love. May we feel confident and worthy. I pray that we would grow closer to you every day. Fuel a desire deep within us to seek after you. I pray that we would lead a life by the example of Christ set. May we face everything with courage, and may we walk with integrity. Help us with anything we are struggling with. Surround us with encouragement, and give us your precious wisdom. May we experience joy today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would stand now for our opening hymn, The Old Rugged Cross.
You have before you our updated prayer list, and it's in your program as well. Are there, uh, let's see, any particular concerns that maybe we were not aware of that we should know about this morning? I know we have some updates. Yes, Sharon? Yeah, Ron and I had uh, joined our list week, uh, spending two weeks with our grandchildren in Seattle. It was amazing, a great time. We all survived. Uh, I thought that was okay. Uh, my sorrow is my cousin, Mark. 63 um, died of COVID pneumonia this past week. Short time in the hospital. Well, indeed, we rejoice with you the time you've had with family, with your son, grandchildren. Let's remember your cousin's family, Mark, and his death this week. One of the updates we want to share with you is um, Deb Moran. Deb was, perhaps still is, I'm not sure, was hospitalized the other day, also with COVID, and several family members uh, have it as well. So she's asking for your ongoing prayers, but Shelly was sharing that she's had, sounds like good, progress so far. Hopefully we'll be coming home today. So continue to remember Deb. She has started her treatments for the lung cancer. So a lot going on for her. So she would just continue to tell your prayers for her, for Richard, as they are walking through this time. But you know Deb, most of you, very well. She's excited and rejoicing. <laughs> Always find something lift up and uh, joy and thanksgiving. So one of those things was she texted me yesterday after I had inquired how things were doing and found out she was in the hospital. She fired back a little short text after I mentioned that we would continue to keep them in prayer. She said, well, Jesus is here. And uh, I thought, you know, that's exactly what she needs. She doesn't need me. She needs Jesus has in his spirit with her every day. So continue to remember that. Um, many, many more on our prayer list. Um, of course, I think we've all had on our hearts and minds the families of those who continue to live with the loss of September 11th, 20 years ago already. Just continue to remember our thanksgiving to God for our lives, the opportunities to serve, to share, and to walk with those folks among us who continue to deal with that loss. Yes? Uh, a friend, Janet and Dennis Greer from Florence, left yesterday for Red Cross. They took the food truck down all right so let's be remembering the red cross that they're going down to this particular group i know there's others that have already been making their way as well it's good to know that we can pray for them and their ministry Yes, um, I think many of you heard about the young woman that was killed on the interstate earlier this week, Wendy Cost, a member of her family, um, in prayer this morning. Let's pray again.
Gracious God Almighty, we give you thanks and praise. We are so grateful, O oh God, for the way in which you have formed and fashioned us and how you have created us as a people. Would you give to us a family? Give to us that means of being nurtured and shaped and molded. Being able to find comfort and shelter, as well as to be encouraged to live and step forth in faithfulness. We do ask, O oh God, your mercy and your favor upon the concerns of our hearts. Lord, you have known us. You continue to know us. And so let us continue to freely come to you and know there's not a thing that we cannot ask and seek that you are not already aware and that in many instances you are waiting for us to turn to you so that your Holy Spirit your precious comfort your healing mercy power of your presence and provide that which we need to be able to rise up and continue to live in faithfulness and gladness. We do pray, especially, Lord God, for those who are grieving. We ask your favor to be upon Mark's family, upon the Haas family, Lord, we pray for Deb and Richard and their family. Several in our community who are struggling with health issues. We also rejoice, O oh God, for the blessings of being able to celebrate with family and friends. On this Weekend's occasion, already 20 years, oh God, since that day in September in 2001. We continue to give thanks for those who are willing to literally rise up and to do what sometimes we are called to do, to be willing to lay down our lives for others. And in those acts of service and witness, we're reminded that every day you call us to lay down our lives for others. Perhaps we, we do not literally meet the end of our days in this daily act. But surely the witness and the service of our lives may indeed rescue save someone who is wandering in doubt or fear. We thank you that you are God who is always faithful. And so in spite of all of the challenges and difficulties that may seem to roll like waves upon us, we know that Jesus Christ has conquered sin and death and has risen. And we have assurance. So we ask that you continue to empower us to live in this faithfulness. We do thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity to celebrate the witness of women in ministry. We thank you for the legacy of that witness and the ongoing ways in which it continues to be shaping and molding lives to so we pray that in the power of your spirit, you would speak to our hearts and lives and stir us up to love and good deeds. All of this we ask in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not to the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the
older women who knew Bob. And so they would stop at the table and talk to her for a minute and move on to, to enjoy their lunch. And, and mom started, mom was having a little trouble grasping this job change. After 35 years with the Boy Scouts, and I was going to be doing something different. She said, so let me understand. So you're going to be working for a Methodist group that takes care of children. I said, that's exactly right. And she said, you're going to be raising money to, to support them. I said, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing now. And then she kind of pointed across the room and very loudly said, well, don't bother with that table. They're the Presbyterians. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, Mom, we'll take money from anybody. You have to get the guy in here. So, uh, so just, a, just a great opportunity to celebrate the United Methodist Women here today. And all you do, Marcia just touched on a few of the things that you do for our kids at Cunningham, and we're just uh, uh, so grateful for all of you do. So, you may remember the last time that Cunningham was here worshiping with you. My colleague, Ginger, shared a message called Hanging on to Hope that spoke to the importance of our staff, our youth, and our families we serve, and how your support helps that, uh, through our conference, our kids campaign. Ginger talked about how we were no longer a traditional orphanage but that through our 126-year history, we had evolved into an exemplary child welfare agency that today serves nearly 800 individuals and families through three major programs, residential treatment, community-based counseling services, services, and special education. Most of those people we serve are referred to us from the state and child, community child welfare agencies. 55% of those are served are children, youth, and young adults between the ages of 10 and 19. A lot of people believe that most of our kids come from Chicago, but in actuality, 95% of them come from right here in central Illinois, within a two-hour radius of Champaign-Urbana. But while statistics are impressive and meaningful, this morning, I really want to focus on sharing some real stories of the experiences of our Cunningham youth and how those experiences are linked to eight biblical truths. So let's begin with the definition of a biblical truth. A biblical truth is a certainty about the nature and the character of God. Biblical truths are key takeaways from the Bible. They are the powerful certainties and assurances that make all the difference in living a meaningful, joyful, and purposeful life. A forgiven and free life. Without these truths, we would struggle, we would despair, we would lose hope, and ultimately lose our way. Biblical truth number one. God's Spirit is with us from the beginning. In Genesis 2-7, we're told, The Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. God breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. 1 Corinthians 6.19 tells us, Do you know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? The biblical truth is that God is in us. Literally, our Creator, God's Spirit, is part of us. Some of you who come to Cunningham have never been taught about God, never gone to church, never even prayed, or been prayed over. But amazingly, still have a knowledge that there is some kind of God. And most of them long to be connected with God. Sure, there are some who don't want to have anything to do with God, and even blame God for all that they have gone through. But the vast majority are hanging on to a thread of hope that some higher power, some supreme spirit being, cares about them. They want to believe that they weren't a mistake and that they have value. I believe that feeling is there inside them because God put it there when God gave them life. One day a teenager at Cunningham was running across campus. He wasn't running away. He was running straight towards Chaplain Gay Creek's car. As soon as he got to the car, the youth caught his breath and said, I do believe in God. Just the day before, he had told her, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. But that morning, he greeted her with the words, I do believe in God. And then asked, can I have a copy of the book 
a purpose-driven life. There is a longing inside us, this calling to us that we, that we didn't put there, but comes from God. Biblical truth number two, the Spirit of God moves in mind-boggling ways. Genesis 1, 2, 3 tells us, The earth was dark and empty, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. In John 3, 8, Jesus said, The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is growing. So it is with everyone born in the Spirit. God's Spirit moves at places and times that we least expect it. I can tell you that God's Spirit is working overtime at Cunningham. Time and time again, God speaks through. One day after a chapel service, a boy said, I felt something during that last song. It was like a chill, but it wasn't cold. It felt good, and it made me want to talk about my feelings. And I don't usually do that. For the next 30 minutes, lots of feelings poured out of him. He circled back to that feeling he had gotten and asked, what was that? That was God's spirit, he was told. He said, I get it. God was trying to show me that talking about things that bother me are better than keeping my thoughts to myself, where they become negative. Another young man was listening to a song called Writings on the Wall, a James Bond movie theme song, while he was taking a shower. God spoke to him in these words. I've spent a lot of lifetime running, a million shards of glass haunt me from the past. When all hope begins to shatter, I know that I won't be afraid. If I risk it all, could you break my fall? Afterward, he told Chaplin what had happened. He said, I realize now that if I want my life and other people's lives to be better, I have to trust and follow God. God's, God's spirit moves in mysterious, unpredictable, and mind-boggling ways. Spiritual truth number three. God hears and answers. Jeremiah 29, 12, 13 says, you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me, when you seek me with all your heart. And in Luke 11, 9, Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will open to you. One evening, a young woman refused to go to her room because she kept seeing the face of her abuser in her window. Others couldn't see him. But she could. Together with Chaplain Gay, she went into her room. They placed their hands on the window and prayed several times. God removed the evil from the place and let and only let her spirit in. She slept fine that night, and any time that face would appear, she knew what to do. She would touch that place where it appeared and pray. God remove the evil from this place and only let your spirit in and it could go away. One day, he was talking about David and Goliath and the giants that we sometimes face in our lives. A young man said, I'll tell you, tell you all what my giant was. I was in juvenile detention center. I was facing being locked up for several years because of what I'd done. The day before I was going to court, I prayed all day and all night, and I didn't eat. I just prayed. The next day, all the charges were dropped, and I came to Cunningham. God took down my giant. On Easter Sunday, I used right messages to used right messages to God and tied them to a healing of balloons that are released in our chapel at the Spiritual Life Center on campus. Six months after Easter, a young woman came to chapel and said, At Easter, I wrote to God, telling God I wanted to have visits with my mom. And now, six months later, I had my first visit. God does answer prayers, she said. Biblical truth number four. There is no sin so terrible God cannot forgive. John 1, 9 tells us if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all righteousness. In 2 
Corinthians 5.17, we're told that anyone who belongs to Christ and, and is a new creation, and life is gone, and a new life has begun. The youth were watching a video by this skit guy. It's called Chisel. In the skit, one guy asked God to change his life. The other guy, playing God, comes with a chisel and starts to chip away various things in the man's life that don't belong, and that are keeping him from being the person God wants him to be. After the video, the boy said, I'm just like that guy. I have so many things wrong with me. I've done so many things wrong. And that's when the chaplain introduced him to the verse, a verse that has become his favorite. Anyone who belongs to Christ is a new creation. Another young man wrote in his, this in his journal. On Thursday, October 9 at 6 a.m., I am alone in my room. I invited Jesus into my life. I know I am a broken person, and he is the only one who can truly fix me. Even though I have turned my back numerous times by my life, God never turns his back on me. I know I am forgiven, and with God on my side, I will learn to make better choices in my life. There's nothing, no past so bad that God can't forgive. Biblical truth number five. God gives us hope and strength in times of trouble. Psalms 46, 1 tells us God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. And Psalm 23, 4 says, even though I walk through the valley of death, I will not be afraid for you are with me. We have a brand new ministry at Cunningham. It's called Caminos, meaning journey, or path, or road. In alignment with our vision to see every child thrive, we've begun delivering services to a new popula population of children who need our help. The Caminos program will provide safe and secure placement options for the unaccompanied children who have recently migrated to the United States. These are young people who have made a journey on their own from their home countries in Central America. They are escaping drug lords, gangs, extreme poverty, and violence, trying to get to extended family here in the United States where it would be safe. They are placed temporarily in Cunningham's care and are seeking opportunities for unification with family and a chance to pursue their education and legal immigration cases. Chaplain Gay shared the 23rd Psalms with our Camino youth. They discussed how the Good Shepherd leads and guides us. I bet you can guess what their responses were when they were asked, who is the most, what is the most helpful verse for, for you from the Psalm? They said, he is our shepherd. He takes care of us. Jesus got us through the valley. We traveled to get here. Another young woman in our care has has a mother who suffers from mental illness. The mother has held on to the mother has held on to four of her five children, but she has no interest in her older daughter. This young woman, who I'll call Lily, has no hope of returning home to her mother. Before coming to Cunningham, Lily felt so rejected and hopeless that she turned to a gang for acceptance and was involved in prostitution. One day, when in a Bible study at Cunningham, the group read Psalm 27. Psalm 27, 10 was read, Even if my father and mother abandoned me, the Lord will hold me close. Lily smiled, pointed up, and then said, He's my only hope. God gives us strength and hope in times of trouble. Biblical truth number six. God has a plan for each of us. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans you, I have. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to pros prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and future. God has a plan for us. A young woman came to a spiritual discussion group at Cunningham. Before the group got started, she was irritable, saying that she was tired of everything. She felt like giving up. The group opened with Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. I know the plans I have for you. When the young woman heard the verse, she shouted out, that's the third time I've heard this, that verse this week. She was asked, do you think there's a reason for that? She said, yeah, 
God doesn't want me to give up. During vacation Bible school, youth were sitting inside a huge plastic dark whale and discussing the story of Jonah and what the story has to do with our lives. The young woman, the young woman said, that story is telling me that God placed me at Cunningham to give me another chance. Here I'm leaning on learning how to live my life the right way. Cunningham is like a stepping stone to adulthood. And just before our Christmas program was to get underway, a boy who was supposed to be playing the part of the indicator bailed out. Another boy was asked, another boy was asked if he would be willing to step in at the last minute to play the role of the innkeeper. His face lit up and he said, you mean I get to be the person who helps Jesus? Yes. When she, when she left Cunningham, the young woman shared with her peers, when I first came here, I had no idea who I was. I thought I was alone. I thought nobody cared. But now I know I'm a child of God. I am a survivor of depression. I am no longer self-harming. Recently, she came back for a visit. She now is in college to become a vet tech, vet tech and is teaching Sunday school. God has a plan for all of us. Biblical truth number seven. God's love is the greatest gift of all. Romans 5 8 tells us God demonstrates his love for us in this. Well, we are still sinners. Christ died for us. And John 3.16, of course, says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. One of our young women asked to be baptized. She was abused in every way for years. She felt dirty. When she came out of the swimming pool, she smiled at those who had gathered for the important moment in her life. And she said, thank you for the opportunity to be cleansed in Jesus' love. A young woman who recently transitioned from our agency to another place, a very young man, I'm sorry, he was with us for nine years. We saw him grow in so many ways. A few years ago when Chaplin commented on how she had seen him maturing, handling his anger, and managing his behaviors in more positive ways, he nodded his head and responded, a little bit of Jesus makes a big difference. But that's not the end of the story. Over the next several years, he explored dozens of religions, sometimes a different one every week. Week after week, he discussed faith with Chapman Gay. Two weeks before he left, he said, I want to be baptized. I've tried every religion, and Christianity is the only one that works for me. So he was baptized the day before he left coming here. God's love is so great, so amazing, so life-changing. Biblical truth number eight. We cannot do this alone. Ecclesiastes 4.9 tells us two are better than one because, because have a great reward of their toil. God's love shines through in how you all love and support our kids. The quotes made by the UMW from every corner of the Illinois Greater Rich Conference are a wonderful example of helping our kids. They are beautiful and a constant reminder to our kids that they are loved and safe at coming in. God's love is demonstrated in how you pray for our kids, their families, our staff. The book that insert today includes specific prayer requests submitted by our youth. Another significant way to help our kids feel love is by monthly giving to Cunningham. It can easily be set up, much like you do for your favorite streaming service, like Netflix or Disney Plus. Any amount given monthly helps us fill the gap between what the state and child welfare services reimburse us and what it actually costs to care for our youth. There's more information about regular giving at our, on our website. No matter how you show love for our kids at Cunningham, whether it be prayers, quilts, Christmas gifts, volunteering or financial support, your devotion is deeply appreciated. Thank you for supporting the youth and families like the Good Biblical good Truths. Your support helps provide powerful certainties and assurances that will make a difference in helping them find a meaningful 
joyful and purposeful life, a forgiven and free life. Thank you all very much.